Hey, Strength Runners, uh, cycle one, session one. Uh, today we're going to have a look at a little bit of single leg balance work, um, some calf raises and a bit of core. So starting off with our, our warm up, we're going to do some heel and toe walks first. So the heel walks, remember, that's where we want to come onto the heel, so lift the toes up towards the shins, keep the legs nice and straight, nice upright torso as we just walk on the heels, taking small steps, keeping those toes off the floor. And we're going to go for 20 steps, so 10 per side. Then once you've done that, you're then going to go into your uh, toe walk. So now coming onto the balls of the feet, onto the big toes, little toes, and then lifting the heels off the floor. And again, just keeping the legs straight, upright torso, nice small steps. And again, you're going to go for 20 steps on that, so 10 per side on those also. From there, we're going to go into our glute bridges. So just lying on the back, feet about hip width apart, and we're focusing on tucking the pelvis under first, and then lifting the hips up, making sure we don't arch the back at the top, so we don't want to go too high with the hips, little pause at the top, and then back down. So tuck, lift, pause, control. Really focusing on making sure that the hips aren't rotating one side or the other, trying to keep them relatively even at the top, and feeling that tension in the glutes, you might feel a little bit of a stretch in the quads, that's normal as well. And you're gonna go for 15 reps on that one. Then from there, you're gonna go into your hip series. So for this one, we're gonna do that mountain climber stretch into a pigeon stretch. So from the press up position, all we're gonna do, step one foot as close to the hand as we can, ideally get the hand, uh, sorry, the foot next to the hand, drop the back knee to increase and lift the chest, hold for a second, then with that same foot, you're then gonna bring it into the pigeon stretch. So as you can see, bringing the knee towards the same sided wrist, hold for a second, and we're gonna alternate legs. Just a brief pause in each movement, and we're gonna go for six on each side on those. Like I said, just a brief pause in each position. From there, you're then gonna go into your uh, cat-cow to finish. So just getting a little bit of upper body posture now. So from the hands and knees, we want the hands under the shoulders, the knees under the hips, and all we're gonna do is press through the floor, round the upper back as we tuck the chin into the chest, and then relax back to the start. We don't need to arch our lower back at the end. I know we do that in sort of yoga and things, but we're not after that for this particular warm up. We're just focusing on mobilizing the upper back. So really just push through, spread those shoulder blades apart, tuck the chin into the chest, and then just relax back to the start position and you're gonna go for 15 reps on that as well, okay? So heel toe walks, then into glute bridge, then into hip series, and then into that cat cow. One round on that, so do each movement one after the other, nice and controlled, nice and steady. Remember it's a warm up, it's not for speed or time, it's for quality. So take time with those exercises, and like I said, just the one time through. So moving on to our main session now, we're gonna do some single leg balance, and some hip flexor work, and then moving on to some core and calves. So first two exercises we're gonna go through are the sprinter hold single leg balance, and then some supine psoas march. So sprinter holds, as the name suggests, we're gonna get into that sprint position. So what we're looking for is one foot nice and straight on the ground, then we're gonna bring the opposite arm and opposite leg up. So I'm gonna lift my left leg, therefore my left, uh, sorry, my right arm is gonna come up as well, and then my left arm is gonna go behind me as if I'm sprinting. So we want a 90 degree bend on that leg that's being lifted up, with the foot hanging beneath the knee, bringing those arms up into that sprinter position, and we're just gonna hold that, really focusing on using the glute, using the big toe, little toe on the foot that's on the ground, from the front, again, so it's up, into that sprinter stance, you can see my right elbow is almost pointing forward, so we've got 90 degrees, palms facing up to the sky. Other hand, we're trying to reach almost towards the back pocket on the shorts, all right, and hold that position. And that's what we're looking for. So upright torso, 90 degree bend, arm behind us, other arm in front. 
and you're going to hold that for 20 to 30 seconds per side okay really focusing again on that quality try and avoid wobbling around too much if you find you come out of it that's fine just have a quick reset and go back into it the key is using that foot to do most of the work yes yeah? so like i said think about engaging the big toe the little toe in the heel into the ground not necessarily curling the toes but almost pushing into the floor to give you that stability so you can do 20 to 30 seconds on that then you're going to go into some supine psoas marches so for that one you're going to need a mini band so again reasonable strength for this one you're going to place the band around the tops of your feet so like that you're then going to lie on your back nice and flat with the legs straight and all we're going to do is keeping both toes pointing straight up to the ceiling you're going to pull one knee into the chest whilst keeping the other leg straight and bring that knee as far into the the chest as you can hold for a second at the top and then back to the start you're going to alternate legs getting a little pause really feeling that hip working that quad working to pull that knee in and just control back so don't let the band just snap you back to the start as you do that and like i said we're going to alternate legs and we're going to go for 15 per side on those with the supine marches as well, really try and focus on keeping your back relatively flat. So you don't have to force it into the ground, but try and avoid it overarching as you bring that knee into the chest. So gently push it into the ground or just keep a natural curve in the lower back as you do that exercise. So 15 per side on that. So your first two movements, your sprinter holds, 20 to 30 seconds. Supine marches, 15 per side three rounds on those two exercises, giving yourself 30 to 60 seconds rest between each round as you feel you need to. Obviously, if the band is quite easy on the supine marches, go for a thicker band or a heavier resistance band. Then next two exercises now are your plank and calf raises. So plank, super basic movement, but again, can be done wrong. So we wanna make sure we get these good points of performance when we set up. So first thing first, you want that elbows underneath the shoulders and you want your hands separate. You don't wanna be squeezing through the hands like this. Then we want the feet together ideally. So we're creating that nice straight line from the head all the way down to the feet. So we don't wanna be up here, but equally we don't wanna be like this and letting the hips sag. And we're just gonna hold that. If you need to make it slightly easier, then bring the feet further apart. So the wider apart they are, the easier it is. Or if we need to, we can always just go to the knees to begin with. But I'd rather you, even if it's only for 10 seconds at a time, I'd rather you go wide with the feet, okay? And you'll be guaranteed be able to hold it for at least five to 10 seconds. And you could always just break that up into little sets. If you're quite comfortable with the movement, aiming for 30 to 60 second hold on that exercise. From there, we're then gonna go into calf raises. So for this one, we're going for uh, single leg calf raises. So you need some sort of support, so a post, a wall or anything, just something you can have a light grip onto, so you're not gripping onto it to, to assist with the movement, just something that's just nice and easy to support. Then you're gonna come onto one leg, again, make sure the foot's in a nice straight line, bend the other leg so it's just out of the way, and then all we're gonna do is push the big toe through the floor and lift the heel up. Keeping the leg nice and straight, and just pause at the top, and control back down. So you're kinda of looking for, Couple of seconds up, couple of seconds down in terms of that tempo. If you want to load it up, take a dumbbell or a kettlebell in the opposite hand to the leg that's doing the work. So if I'm calf raising on my right leg, I've got my dumbbell or kettlebell in my left hand as I'm going through that, okay? If you have the opportunity to, you can also increase the range of motion by using something like a platform or a step to stand on. So all you're gonna do is exactly the same movement, but you're gonna make sure that all of your toes are on your step or platform um, and all the way sort of to the middle of the foot, okay? So we want the heel just to hang off the edge. And then all you're gonna do is, as you start the movement now, you're gonna drop the heel below the toes, so feel a good stretch in that calf. And then again, same as before, just push the big toe, little toe through and lift that heel up, little pause, and then control down. Feel that heel drop just below, like that. And again, if you want to load it up, that one would be a bit more challenging on flat ground. So feel free to start off with body weight, but if you want to load it up again, take a dumbbell or kettlebell in the opposite hand to the leg that's doing the work. You're going to go for 15 reps per side on those calf raises. So plank, 30 to 60 seconds. 
Then it's straight into your calf raises, 15 per side. And again, three rounds on those two exercises with a 30 to 60 second rest between. As I said, if you wanna modify the plank slightly, just bring those feet further apart and really focus on making sure you feel it here and not in the lower back. If you feel it in the lower back, you've probably dropped your hips too much. So again, just adjust that position so you don't feel that tension in the lower back as you're doing that exercise. All right, have a go at that. Any questions, just give me a shout.